Howdy folks, hope you're all having a good one, and welcome back to World of Tanks with the Mighty Jingles, where today's video sees the return of the E25, known to the World of Tanks community as the Cockroach. Why do they call it the Cockroach Jingles? Well, because it's tiny, moves like greased lightning, it can be right next to you and you wouldn't know it, and it's nearly impossible to kill. And this particular cockroach has been driven for us today by Marcin B123, who, judging by the name, probably hails from Poland. So, why is it so hard to kill? Well, it has an amazing stealth rating, even when it's on the move. Because it's so small and low profile, it's next to impossible to spot this thing, as Marcin is going to demonstrate several times throughout the course of this Tier 7 standard battle on the El Halouf map. But what if you do spot it? It's not particularly well armoured, is it, Jingles? No, it's not. It only has 50mm of armour pretty much everywhere. And that is nothing at Tier 7. Hell, that's nothing at Tier 4. But it's not the thickness of the armour. It's the sloping of the armour. Which often means that even if you are lucky enough to spot one of these little cockroaches and manage to get a shot off that actually hits it, before it scuttles off back into the darkness, the chances are fairly good that it's just going to ricochet. And gold ammo doesn't help, because your shots aren't bouncing off this thing because you don't have enough penetration. It only has 50mm of armour anyway. Oh, here's our first victim. And our first practical demonstration of the terrifying rate of fire of the E25 75mm gun. Yeah, more on that in a moment. But yeah, if your shots are bouncing off this thing, pressing 2 to load the skill and get increased penetration isn't going to help, because lack of penetration isn't the issue. The issue is that your shells aren't able to find a flat surface to impact, bite into, and actually cause damage, which is the chief source of frustration, but not the only source of frustration, when people are fighting the cockroach. Oh dear, look at the VK 3001H. I really used to like that tank. It used to be a blisteringly quick tier 5 medium, with terrible armour, but a good selection of guns. And now it's a slow-ass medium, with terrible armour. It still has a decent selection of guns, but as you can see by the shot fired at the T-67 there, that kind of just casually sailed through the air and landed nowhere near it, he's using the worst possible gun, the 105mm howitzer, which was an okay gun back in the day, but since the high explosive nerf, it's just a waste of time particularly when you're trying to hit fast-moving targets like T-67s at ranges of 350 metres. Just... no. But anyway, back to the E-25. Did you notice the accuracy of the shot that hit the SU-85 in the rocks on the other side of the valley? Which, incidentally, has given Mars and his teams only two kills so far. It's not just the stealth. It's not just the frustratingly well-sloped armour, it's the accuracy and shockingly fast rate of fire of this 75mm gun. It's kind of like the 75mm gun that you get on the Stug 4 at Tier 5, except on steroids. And we'll get back to the gun in a moment. In fact, we're going to get a practical demonstration of what this gun can do in not too long, as Marcin is demonstrating the mobility of the E25. He's been paying attention to the map, things up north are not looking too good, so he's... Uh, He's relocating to assist, and you can do that really quickly in the E25, because it has a top speed of 65 kilometers per hour, and the kind of power to weight ratio that would embarrass a light tank, 26 horsepower per tonne. Which, fact fans, is 5 horsepower per tonne more powerful than the tier 7 light tank in the German line, the Sperrpanzer 1C. Yes, really. And yes, he is sitting in the open, waiting to shoot at enemy tanks as they come over the ridge up there to the north. But, well, it doesn't matter, because the stealth on this thing is so good, he'll be able to shoot at them and snipe at their weak spots, by the way, even at this range, while sitting in the open, and not be seen. But hey, if there's a handy bush nearby, you may as well use it. Note that he's so close to the bush that it's really only going to be a benefit for him until he shoots. But also note that it's not making the slightest bit of difference because he isn't spotted. Also, with that three second rate of fire, the first shot immobilised the 40 TP, the second shot immobilised him again after he'd used his repair kit, and now he's dead. With that kind of rate of fire, when this thing starts shooting into your tracks, you stay immobilised until either you die or it does. Also, note that even after shooting through cover, at no point did Sixth Sense go off. He never got spotted. 
true the 40TP did fire back but it was a blind shot he did not actually know that he was here he was just guessing his location based on where the shots were coming from and the fact that well this was a very very suspicious looking bush so you've got a tiny low profile stealthy as all hell tank destroyer that can do 65 kilometers per hour and has a better horsepower to weight ratio than most light tanks with a 75mm gun that fires every 3 seconds with a 1.5 second aiming time and 0.3 accuracy that may only have 150mm of penetration unless you press the 2 key and get 194mm of penetration but you rarely need to press the 2 key because even at ranges like that if you fail to hit the weak spot even at ranges like this you only have to wait 3 seconds to do it again you can see why this thing was removed from sale can't you? officially Wargaming said that this thing was just too good Although, I can't help but find it more than a little suspicious that it was perfectly fine to be on sale for months until sales started to drop off, at which point they said, yes, it's too good and now we need to remove it from sale. But the only thing that happens when Wargaming remove an overpowered tank like the E25 from sale is that they create what economists call artificial scarcity. All it does is increase demand. Because it's digital goods, it's not like they're selling real tanks here, it's just ones and zeros, they're never going to run out of pixels. So I only really buy the we're removing it from sale because it's too good argument if they keep it out of the premium shop because when they put it back on sale, which they have done twice now, sales go through the roof <laughs> because they're creating artificial scarcity. So yeah, they know how good this tank is. They know exactly what they're doing. Oh, come on, Jingles. Isn't it time you change this particular record? We've heard about these overpowered tanks before. Look at the Defender. Everybody said that was overpowered when it first came out, but nobody really cares about the Defender anymore, do they? Well, yeah, but it's not quite the same thing. But don't take my word for it. Just wait until you see the battle results screen. How much fun do you think that IS is having? You'll note, of course, that Marcin still isn't spotted. Certainly not by the tanks in front of him, anyway. Oh, T-29's down. And sneaky enemy E-25 on the flank. Who also hasn't spotted him, although that was more down to luck than judgement and the arrangement of those bushes there. Actually managed to score a penetrate and hit. I'm actually quite surprised. Fresh enemy tanks coming down the road up ahead. T-3485M coming down the road up ahead. Attention fixed on the Panther, and he does get him. Well, that's the last thing he's going to get. There's no way he was even going to get the turret around, let alone get the shot off, before Marson drilled another shot into him. There's now only three of them left against six. They're outnumbered two to one. But this isn't an issue. Taking a quick peek to see whether or not the enemy E25 is still lurking there, and also to see whether or not his sixth sense went off, and it didn't, so he knows that there's nobody with a view of that ridgeline. Easily spots the IS pushing down the road without getting spotted in return. Remember, the sixth sense doesn't go off immediately. There's a three second delay, but the IS didn't see him. Not that an IS has a particularly good view range in the first place. No, that one didn't go through. He's down to 12 rounds of armor piercing ammunition. The M10 taking up cover behind the rock there. And when it comes... Oh shit, that's not good. But again, not spotted. And the IKV to the rear took care of the problem. Three against five. Now, check this out. Ah yes, at a range of slightly less than 200 metres. He's aiming for the commander's cupola. Hits it with a second shot. Hits it with a third shot. The IS has seen him, but will have to move forward in order to get his gun over the ridge. And kind of screws it up by firing into the ground in front of him. Now, do you think he's going to get to reload? Or even get him to cover before Marson finishes him off? And the answer to that question is... Nope. Three against four. Although the IKV is probably going to lose this fight. But can he do some damage? Two enemy tanks. Oh, he's managed to get a shot off. But he's dead. Two enemy tanks on that road. Cannot afford to leave them behind him with a KV-1 pushing the other flank. So he's going to go for it. And he's got plenty of health, so he should be fine. Now, on the move, full speed, auto-aim... Watch this. There's one. And there's two. And there's the enemy T-150. Although, what in the hell was he 150 doing sniping from the ridge on the other side of the valley? <laughs> 
either way, best not to take any chances. Into cover, waits to go undetected. T-150 is never going to spot him, not from that kind of range. And now, full throttle, accelerating with this ridiculous 26 horsepower per ton power to weight ratio in order to come to the aid of what is almost certainly an extremely nervous M10 who's trying to fight off that KV-1 and is now very wisely playing a game of chasey chasey catchy catchy killy killy around the rock over there. Marcin letting the M10 know he's coming to the rescue and Marcin has been communicating very well with his team throughout this whole battle always letting them know where he's going and what he's going to do when he gets there and now well what chance does this poor KV-1 have? And the only reason this KV-1 is going to get two shots into him is because he fluffed the first shot by turning too steeply and not having the fire and arc to allow the gun to bear with auto aim. And that's his ninth kill and there's just the T-150 left. And well, we know where he was. It's not a particularly fast tank so it can't have gotten too far. And based on the fact that the T-150 was trying to snipe from the opposite ridgeline on El Halouf probably not a great player so probably still in the same location although that location isn't actually too bad from a tactical perspective given that he's now two against one and they're going to be coming for the cap so he is actually in a great position if he can find some concealment to defend the cap and potentially because the t-150 is a tough tank with a well he might have a 107 millimeter gun which can do a fair amount of damage he could two shot Marcin and he could certainly one-shot the M10. It's all going to depend on whether or not that T-150 has the 107mm gun, which can do 300 damage, and does have a kind of slow reload, it's like 9 seconds-ish, and whether or not he's going to do anything about the fact that his base is being capped. Although he should be able to tell that the base is only being capped by one vehicle, and you kind of have to assume that that's going to be the E-25, because it can do 65 kilometers per hour and the M10 can't. So that may be making him nervous because he's not going to know where the M10 is. Marcin has a pretty good idea of where the T150 is going to be. Doesn't seem to think the T150 is going to have moved at all and he has asked the M10 if he can get the 10th kill because you know pool's metal. There's no harm in asking although you shouldn't expect your teammates to allow you to get it but under these kind of circumstances you'd have to be kind of a dick to not let somebody get the pool's medal particularly if there's no risk to you. Any second now, the M10 is going to arrive in the cap circle, and Marcin is clearly thinking that he's going to go for glory. Waiting for the M10 to get in there. He is. M10 is now capping. Marcin weighing up the odds there and thinking, you know what, based on the fact that the T-150 is not trying to defend this cap, you can see from the health bars at the top of the screen that the T-150 only has 223 health, which is two shots for Marcin, but, well, Marcin's two shots for the T-150. And two shots for Marcin is only three seconds. Two shots for him, and yes, of course, he's in exactly the same position. Why wouldn't he be? Oh! And a bit of a plot twist at the end there, because the M10 did go for it and tried to take that last kill. Fortunately, Marcin's first shot bounced. If not for that, the M10 would have gotten the final kill and Marcin would have been stuck on 9 and denied the pool's medal, but... Well, the unlucky first bounce turned out to be good luck after all, and it's a 10th kill and a pool's medal here on the El Haluf map for Marcin B123 in the E25. A clearly overpowered machine. And I'm not saying it's overpowered because Marcin got 10 kills. I'm not saying it's overpowered because Marcin got 3,392 damage done in this Tier 7 battle. I'm saying it's overpowered because he got 10 kills and 3,392 damage and that, in this machine, is not good enough for an Ace Tanker award. Yes kids, that, and no disrespect intended towards Marcin here because he played extremely well, but that is just a slightly above average game in the E25. Don't worry, I'm sure they'll be putting it on sale again soon. <laughs> Congratulations, Marcin. Uh, extremely well played. And thank you for sending the replay in. Everyone else, I hope you enjoyed it. And as always, take care, stay safe, and I'll catch you next time.